scripture, but looking at the overall plan of God, you can't help but see He's over all. Yes, amen. He's super rules. Mm -hmm. yes, As Ellen read from the scripture this morning, book Colossians. He made everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. He made everything. Yes, he did. Thank you, Lord. And by him all things exist. Without him, it will just fall. Yes, so, thank you. And we read from the book of uh, Romans, I think that kind of covers it all. For we know that all things work together for good. To those who love God. There are some believers who don't love God. They're believers by new birth only. But their love is for something else. Because John did cautions us to love not the world. These are the things he loves. For he loved the world than the love of the Father. It's in him. So he was talking to believers who love God, and possibly there was some there that had a love for the world. Mm -hmm. I think there was a young man that went back into the world because he loved his thing with demons. Mm -hmm. For we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. God did call us for purpose. And that purpose was to glorify God because, because those whom he, was, he foreknew, he also predestined to be what? Conformed to the image of his dear son that he might be the firstborn, firstborn among the many brothers. And those who he predestined, these he also called those whom he called, these he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. A lot of stuff in here. Father, in the name of Jesus, the enemy is, is, is coming to try to thwart and stop the message. We pray right now, in the name of Jesus, that the Holy Spirit will rise above my carnality and speak the truth. Give me for all my sins and trespasses right now. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. The sovereignty of God, I, I, I like to do is for conforming. Right? Transform us from one creature to this new creature that he has uh, saved us to be. Any man being Christ, he's a new creature. The sovereignty of God, we, we, we looked at this other night here, this is a sheet I have. The sovereignty of God refers to the fact that God is in complete control. Yes, yes, he is. God is in complete control. As I was here a little bit this morning, sometimes I have to get to a point in my own personal life that I understand and appreciate that God is in control mm -hmm. of everything. Mm -hmm. When everything seems to be going wrong, mm -hmm. it's going wrong because God has permitted it to go wrong. Okay. Yeah, Lord. Amen. If yeah. He's over everything. Yes, Lord. And Everything answers to him. There's no way anything could be going wrong and God not stop it. I'm not God not know about it. It's for conforming. A belief in God's sovereignty is distinct from fatalism. Now fatalism has this kind of thought. Well, here I go again another day. Ain't nothing gonna change. Uh, it, it, it got, whatever is going to happen to me is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's, it, what, what, well, whatever happens, happens. Well, mm -hmm. But that's fatalism. fatalism. And it says that actually outrules God and sits him over here somewhere because you are in charge. Are the, are, you've been predestined to die in your sins, mm -hmm. to go to hell, mm -hmm. to not have a good day, to die early, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And God is completely left out of it. 
humans that these people deny God's free will. Man's free will. You have a free will. And their free will is to go to believe or not to believe. To do or not to do. To say yes, to say no. To go and not to go. That free will. God and see fatalism says that there is no free will. You've already been predestined what you're going to be and where you're going to go. No matter what you do, having determined, having had had did anything to what God, what the, what what you what things, how you're going to wind up. It's like you get up in the morning and God is on your mind mm -hmm. and you're thinking, "Well, today, whatever happens, happens." Mm -hmm. What well, things just happen? Things happen to him that way, that way. Well, that's the way it is. You hear this all the time. That's the way it is. And so I don't care what I, what I decide. That's the way it is. But with God's sovereignty, God can take that way it is and make it into something productive. For him conforming you into the, you know, into his here, humans are able to make genuine choices and have real consequences. Now let's let's look at uh, those three those boys up in uh, Joseph, his brothers. They made choices, right? But look at this: God was outside. Looking. They took him, took the coats off him, the uh, uh, coat of many colors, and actually bird put him in a in a in a, in a ground in a, in a hole. And some Ishmaelites came along, bought him from, from their brother, and carried him down to where? Egypt. To Egypt. Into the house of Potiphar and and his wife. Now what I'm saying here is that God in his sovereignty. Could have stopped that at any time. But God had a purpose for Joseph going down to uh, Egypt and being a, a slave, a, a servant at Potiphar's house, and also raising, raising to be a, a full, I think, a prime minister there in yeah. Egypt to save his people from being, from starvation. Because a big famine was coming. Who, who knew about the famine? God knew about the famine. Joseph didn't know about it. His dad didn't know about it. His brother didn't know about it. But God knew it was. It was coming. So I, I had to put a man in place here so that he could help his brother when the family comes. You see, now God saw it. But what did he go through? He went through all kind of physical, mental, psychological pressure from the, 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 the uh, Egyptian, uh, from, from the Egyptian government. What I'm trying to help, help see here is that God is sovereign. God directly, God does not directly cause everything to happen. He did not cause everything to happen with Joseph. Those boys made that decision themselves. But he knew it was going to happen, so God worked his, his uh, sovereignty in bringing that, 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 that way to see it. That's what I'm trying to get you. He does, he does allow what happens to what happens. You look back at your own personal life, and God saw you from the moment you, actually from Ezekiel says, that when I, when, in your mother's womb, I saw you. So God's sovereignty was there even before you even came out. And began to work, a good work, through the good and bad to bring you right here yeah. where you are today. God will will accomplish what He has the destiny to accomplish. At first blush, you say, "Oh, but they talk about God's will and uh, God's sovereignty." That's for somebody else to, to talk about. No, it's for you as a believer to understand God's sovereignty. Now, what it does for me, and what it did do for me, was put me, took me out of a lot of stressful situations. As Miles was teaching this morning, God gonna take care of everything. 
because of his sovereignty. Yes, Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank is. you, Lord. Remember that nothing is out of control. There it is. If God is here, he's over everything, mm -hmm. nothing is out of control. It may be out of control according to our look and yes. sin and yes. our interpretation, yes. but nothing is out of control. Everything is working mm -hmm. according to God's will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, God's will, it says, however, the sovereign of God is quite practical. And I, we can understand it. One of the keys to really enjoying or receiving revelation through God's sovereignty is that you love it mm -hmm. and that your faith is in it. Mm -hmm. I, no matter what is going on, God is over it. Mm -hmm. The ant crawls along the ground and God sees the ant. Yes. Yes. Amen. The, 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 the bird mm -hmm. sparrow falls from the earth. To the earth, God sees that. Yeah, he does. The turtle walking across the ground here, on, God man. knows about yeah. the turtle, and He knows about you. Amen. Whatever you're going through, God knows all about what you're going through. Yes, and God saw that it's working toward you to shape you into the image of His God, yes, His dear Son. Yes. Now, every time God shapes someone, He's shaping God's God's shaping you into God's image. Doesn't mean He's doing it the same way He does it to me. Amen. Doesn't mean he do it the same way he do it to her, but he's working out his soul, that soul salvation, according to God's eternal plan. Mm -hmm. Now he says here, the sovereignty of God can impact everyday life. How does it impact everyday life? Well, you drive along in your car, mm -hmm. and you want to make the red light. Mm -hmm. But there's somebody at the red light, and you have to stop. And the red light doesn't change, changes why that person set the light, and he pulls off, and you're still at the light. But if it just pulled off another four or five, if he'd have moved when he should have moved, you could have moved right along and kept on track. But you're sitting there. Yes, sir. And God's, God's, God's sovereignty and God's plan is working because that plan is working to help you to, to deal with endurance, patience, understanding, God's will. And, and, and you see how small it is? Even at the red light. That's right. Thank you, Holly. You, 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 you're about to blow up here. Yeah. Ouch. Ouch. Mercy. I mean, I mean this, this stuff, it happened to me, and what happens, I'm saying, I'm saying, with me, in my own personal life, it happens periodically. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that it doesn't, I don't get so upset as I used to. Yeah. In some ways, I don't get upset at all anymore at the red light. I used to get really upset at the red light because of this woman, she's a... Uh, doing something or she's on the phone and yeah. right? she's yeah. doing this kind of stuff and she's looking in the mirror yeah. and I'm, I, I don't blow mm -hmm. because I don't want nobody to get out of the car yeah. and come back to shoot me. Yeah. So I, I do make faces and I do yeah. just yeah. poke out my lip and I just yeah. scratch my head yeah. stuff like that. Get, get out of here. See what you're doing. Yeah. All that kind of yeah. And all these antics, yeah. all oh, this yeah. facial and this, this yeah. movement is designed for one purpose that you stop it. Yes, sir. You stop it. Yes, sir. Allow me to work in you and you stop it. Because one day you're going to be able to, you may be in a situation where God can use you, but you're so upset and so all, all wired up, you can't you can't do anything. So that was just one answer. The sovereignty of God is backed up by his ability. Hallelujah. While you're at the red light, God is transforming you right there. Right? Uh, Earl, I know you I know you stop it all cautious like. You don't go through cautious like. I know it. <laughs> 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 Yellow me, speed up. No, Earl. Earl, Earl last time I will I've been war with you. And seeing you, you stop at all costs of life. But now you, you burn off. That would be the speed up and get through. But sometimes you have.
have to stop. Yeah, you That's do. right. And you, you, you kind of like, you're not in a real big hurry, but if this fellow will just move on, I'll be all right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he does the transforming at that light. So at that light, he's trying to do something to the inner man. Yes, he does. Yeah. See, this inner man, he's the this new creature. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes Lord. This, this new creature. He, he's, he's here. He said, yeah, this, this new man is here. Mm -hmm. Here is the old man here. The new man is right here. The old man always, Chevy and Harvard, he's always standing up. Yeah. 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 Ready. Yes. Yes. He's always standing up. Put it down. So what, what God does at the red light, mm -hmm. he challenges that, that new man. Come on, Harvey. And it, and, it, and it actually upsets the old man. Mm -hmm. But see, your mind has been transformed. Yeah, yeah. And you realize that God saw that brought you to this place. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. So you allow the this man uh -oh. to sit here and put this rock in his, in his rightful place. That's, uh, that's what's happening. See. At the, and not only at the red light, in all situations, every walk of life, the flesh always wants to what? Take over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But God, but Jesus, be, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be not conformed. This, this old, this old rascal, this old rascal, they, he always wants to be conformed to the world. But be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, and your will is working to keep that old man where he should be under your feet. See? Now, he says, uh, it impacts us every day. Uh, I was, um, when we came in Wednesday night and I stopped by the 7 uh, Eleven. The oldest new 7 Eleven left, you know, mm -hmm. right here on, what is that? Isaiah? Isaiah. They opened it up. It's, it's real nice. Uh -huh. And uh, a gentleman was, got out of his truck, about where he is, mm -hmm. and I just got to the door. Mm -hmm. And so I opened the door for him. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and said, Why are you holding the door for me? With his face, expression on his face. Mm -hmm. And when he went through, he said, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm saying there are times when you ought to let that old man smack him right in the face. People need to see more of kindness. Yeah, true. Amen. Amen. Even if you have to go the extra mile, they need to see it. God's sovereignty sometimes puts you in places where you have to make a decision whether or not to go along with this or to go or to cab your own way. Go in and quickly mm -hmm. get past those who don't get closed. Yeah. Then he have to open the door for himself. <laughs> I, I, I know you've been there. Yeah. This is also God breaking you and molding you and shaping you into the image of his dear son. Where kindness becomes a a a a, 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 a real life mm -hmm. in the sense of it's part of you. It's what you do. Yeah. It ain't what you do purely for, here come a, a black man, you open the door for him. Yeah. Yeah. Here come another, another, another come, you, you don't open the door for him. Now God wants to get, break that out of you, and you do it for everybody, no matter what comes to you. You see what I'm saying? God saw me the other day. And he always give you a chance to express Christ. Always. And that's what the sovereignty is all about. Giving you a chance to express what? Christ. Yes, thank you, Lord. The world might have, might intend to be good, be evil, but God intends it to be good. Yes. Those who are part of God's family uh, claim the promise in Romans 8 28. Thank you. We know that all things. All things. Not some all things. All this too, Jesus? This this too? Yeah. I, I, I don't like this too? Well, mm -hmm. What you say? This too? Mm -hmm. I gotta sit here? This too? All things. I, I, I can't do this too? All things. This too? All, All things work together for good and it's mm -hmm. for those who love God mm -hmm. who are called according to their purpose. Right. Now that that's a religious trial as uh, in the book of um, uh, the John's Gospel the Pharisees uh, Jesus said you love me uh, if you knew, 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 knew God, you would know, know the Father, you would love me. So there's a crowd of believers who, who actually been born again, but they're walking where? In the flesh. Mm -hmm. 
and there's a group of other individuals who are born again and they're walking where? In the spirit. This is where the servant of God helps a whole lot in determining where you're walking. Thank you. Determine where you walk, even when you get home, even when you get your car, get in your yard, your children, your everybody about has to has deal with the sovereignty of God working in your life. Now he says, yeah. We can rest in the fact that God, our God, is up, is actually able to work all things for our good. Here comes some down the street. Oh Lord, have mercy. Well, think about this. God is allowing it to happen. Mm -hmm. For what? For conformity. Mm -hmm. You have to deal with this. Mm -hmm. You don't deal with it, but you just that what the Spirit deal with it. There it is. As I uh, read this morning in the book of uh, uh, Corinthians, your weakness is where God, your strength is where God wants to show up at. Once you surrender your flesh, mm -hmm. then there the Spirit is. can do it work. There it is. Amen. I, I, Paul said, I die daily. There it is. Spiritually, fleshly, my flesh died daily. Yeah. Spirit, my spirit, uh, spirit, spirit of Christ is, is rising to take everyone else coming down the, down the pike. Mm -hmm. Sovereignty impacts our daily life. And let me say something. You don't mature yourself. No way. No way. God, uh, God uses his sovereignty mm -hmm. to mature you. Yes, yes. The trials, mm -hmm. the tribulation, mm -hmm. the doubts, the fears, all but you gotta trust God doing all these 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 areas of, of where you where you should trust him. Then you grow inside. So if you want to tackle everything out of your own mind, out of your own flesh, you're not growing. Mm. Now, you, you can grow in more knowledge of the world system mm -hmm. and more knowledge of religion. You can grow in those areas. Mm -hmm. But one thing you can't grow in on your own is spiritual growth. No. God has to grow you himself. Amen. You're his child, so he grows you. Do everybody uh, grow the same? No. 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 Uh, Take up your grass. You got grass in your yard? Mm -hmm. The grass on the shaded tree doesn't tend to grow very much. There it is. Nope. Mm -hmm. But the grass that's out here in the open Come on, and it's properly watered, it, it grows. Oh, yeah. Come on, Harvey. So, so there, there are some people who's on a shaded tree that don't ever grow. They, 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 mm -hmm. Once you come out from the shade, see the shaded tree does give you some comfort. It does protect you from sometimes the elements of the world. The snow, the beaten yeah. rain. It protects you, but you, you don't grow. Nope. You got to get out here in the real world. Yeah. That's out there in, in the open world where you get everything that you're supposed to get for you to grow. That's Amen. Right. See, God's sovereignty pres present things into our lives or confront us where we have to allow Christ to deal with that and not ourselves. Mm -hmm. And you grow. Amen. I, uh, I wonder why I'm not growing. I wonder why I'm not. I, the same part of my head, ten years ago, I still have it. I did pretty good in some areas, but this 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 one thing is still here. Each time that one thing is challenged, you fall flat on your face because you try to do it yourself. Some place in our growing. We have to realize that God wants to mature us and grow us out of that. Mm -hmm. wow. Count all joy when you fall into what? Divers temptation. Knowing that your faith is what? Put at work. Mm -hmm. Now, he says here, Galatians 3 3. Go there for me, please. Mm -hmm. It talks about growing, it talks about God's sovereignty, how it grows us. We can't grow ourselves, children. I'm going to tell you that right now. I, I've tried it for years. And each time I've tried, I, I feel fret on my free. 3-3. Three, three. You got that yet? Okay, you beat me there. 
Ain't no big thing. See that this are you foolish having begun with? By the spirit are now being perfected by the flesh. Uh oh. See? Uh oh. Yeah, it's, it's here. Yes, See, anytime you, you you start out in the spirit, but now you, you're going to perfect yourself in the flesh. Yes, sir. I want to go do something. Look at verse 2. This all I wish to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit out of the works of the law? You doing any kind of work? No. You got it? You, didn't you, you couldn't work to get it. God gave it to you. Out of here. What part do you get? Out of the hearing of faith. Oh, yeah. And are you now foolish? Mm. Having gone the, 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 the spirit, you are now being perfected by the flesh. You want to grow by the flesh, by informing the flesh, educating the flesh, doing all you can to make sure the flesh looks good? No. He said you got to still allow Christ to work it out in the spirit. Yes. One more. Uh, Galatians, uh, not Galatians, uh, Philippians. One six. Philippians one six. Amen. Give us a. You see Philippians one six? Yeah. Let, let me find it first. Here we go. Philippians one six. This stuff. So we know who's growing us. We know exactly who's growing us. We have no problem. Being confident of this thing. Oh, being confident of it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm satisfied that God is, is growing me. Come on, honey. So I got to stop trying to grow myself. It is. You can't be nice without God being nice in you. Yes, sir. Being confident of this very thing that he who will, who will what? But God will work in you. Yeah. That's his job. Well, it in the day of Jesus Christ. So that work is being done daily. Yeah, it is. And the sovereign of God is in charge of all that. Yes, sir. Something coming. I was, I was, I was, I was coming from the gym, I believe it was. I just got this for lunch. Go home. And uh, somebody texted me. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm feeling good. I just worked out. I gave Jay's lunch. And I'm happy. I'm going back to the house. I'm feeling good. <laughs> Bam! Red out of the blue. Just, just, pssst. I couldn't explain. I said, what in the world is she texting me this for? What? 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 <laughs> I know you got it. You got it. You feel it pretty good. You look at everything is just smooth. All my, I love the Lord. All my heart. Bam! This comes up, and your mind goes into orbit. Oh. Yeah. It was for me to get back down to Christ and not get your, not your mind take you out of the realm of spirituality. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Something's always on going to attack your what? Mind. Yeah. And it's always come from where? Outside. 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 It comes from the system. It comes from the, 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 the system of this world under the rulership of the God of this world, which is Satan. So he, he sees you, but not only he sees you, but God sees you. And he can't send anything to you unless God gives him permission. So if, a, if, a, if he sends it, God gave him permission, and we should... Take it in as God's sovereignty, work things out according to His will for Jesus. Amen. Amen. You got to realize that where, wherever it came from and however it got there, it got there because of the permission that God gave it to get there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. If He's over the world, my friend, over everything He is, mm -hmm. nothing can come to a child of God unless God allows it. Mm -hmm. And if He allows it, He allows it for a purpose mm -hmm. to shape and to mold us. Into the image of his dear son. So that's what I got. So I'm texting. I'm texting back. That got mouth all twisted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't curse anymore, but I want to curse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I don't say bad words anymore like I used to say, mm -hmm. but I want to say something. Yeah. Satan ran all that stuff to my mind. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm on the text and text. And I couldn't, I couldn't actually put nothing that was decent in my text. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even text. Come on, Harvey. And and I don't know about you, but that's a, the text guy, so it picks out words for you. <laughs> and it picks so yeah, like this text would read my mind. You said one thing, and the text, the little, little, little thing come up and said, this is, what the, this is what you want to say. But it's not what I want to say, but it came up. But it's so easy to go ahead and, and text exactly what that text thing come back up and say. Auto field. Auto field. Auto field. Auto field, yeah. It does that. And remember, it is, it is from the system. It is from the system. Uh -huh. So the system wants to talk to you, yes, through you, and for you. Yeah, Don't you allow the system oh, to talk to you, on. through you, and for you. You pick your own words out under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to yeah. tax and sin. Yeah. Because if you don't, you're going to send something, you're going to mess it clean up. Yeah, it is. So I didn't text. I put my phone back in my phone. I went on to the house. God saw it working here. I told Claudia about it. She said, what? I said, no. Mm -hmm. So, I couldn't sit with her very long because I'm still out of sorts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I said, let me go down to Kroger and pick my prescription. <laughs> <laughs> she, she said, by all means. Not really like that, but I was saying, yeah, 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 you go ahead. <laughs> and so I went down to Kroger. And on the way down to Kroger, this uh, spirit said, don't say anything. Don't say a moment of word. It is. And say, God want to take care of that. Mm -hmm. yes, thank you, Lord. We always jump around and take yeah, care of things. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. We can pray about it, but still we want to take care of it. Oh, so true. <laughs> <laughs> we say, Lord, help me here. Right. But at the same time, you say, Lord, help me. You're going to help yeah, yourself. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's what I mean by that. And it, it, yes, it shapes you and molds you. To the point that where something is said, you don't have to respond. Amen. Because it gives God what? A chance to respond. A chance to say what he needs to say because you didn't say anything. Once you say something, they ain't going to hear nothing God said. Nothing. Right. Now, next one is uh, the, predest the pr predestination mm -hmm. and the conformity for us, God shaping us into his, as his, his son. Mm -hmm. Our salvation has been paid for by Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. His cross. Mm -hmm. He loved me mm -hmm. through the cross. Amen. And because he paid it all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. So that actually leaves the believer with really to think about it, really nothing to do. Right. But live for it. That's right. That's right there. He done, he done paid it all yeah. and he loved me. So I, I really don't have any reason for fussing here. I have reason for complaining and for getting upset and mad. I gotta stop that because Jesus already paid it. I was thinking of that. Uh, what did Jesus pay? Well, I feel guilt. He's already paid that. I feel shame. He's already paid that. Hallelujah. All sufficient. Thank you. I feel like I want to get back at that boy years ago. If I see him, I'll kill him. Mm -hmm. he, he already took care of it. Mm -hmm. yes, All the old things are passing away. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And we're actually experiencing the new new man. Yes. See, this, this old man, he loves to be in control. Yes. yes. But what Christ does. Yeah, that's so long. To, <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. He's been there so long. He, he, he thinks he, he actually owned this place. Yeah. But Christ actually took him to the cross. Yes, sir. Thank you. So what he wants to do now is just stick his head up. Mm -hmm. uh, but when Christ becomes, and our minds understand that, he becomes less of a, of a problem here. Because mm -hmm. he's moving. Yes, sir. Where's he moving, Jay? Off the throne. Off the throne. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it takes a, it's a process it yeah. to that. And so one day, you'll be freely to walk in the Spirit. Yes, sir. As Paul tells the Galatians, walk in the Spirit. 
and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And they, those that have crucified that uh, are no longer in, 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 involved with the flesh and the thing. Now, nobody's perfect. That's why Paul says uh, he will do that work in you to, uh, to the day of Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you. If God or sovereign also affects our decision. I don't know what kind of decision, what decision you make when, you, when you're going to leave here. But I'm, I, my wife and I and Jay probably will get something to eat. But who knows what happens in all that. Yeah. You may think you're going home, you went, uh, you, you're a little tired, you want to uh, get on the couch, throw, get a blanket, throw you in the couch, like what I do sometimes. Mm -hmm. Claudette wraps it in her, wraps it in her. <laughs> We got blankets all over the table. That's right. I used to, I, did, I hated blankets. I didn't want to go near them. But now, what, what blanket? <laughs> 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 what little, little, little throat to it. <laughs> and, uh, and so, even sometimes, those plans can be interrupted. Yeah. That's a oh, I thought I'd go on home and lay down. But something came up. Yeah. It's God's sovereignty is at work. Is at work. Mm -hmm. A neighbor knocks on the door, a phone call, or, um, something else happens. That's just to keep you from doing that thing you normally do. Yeah. When you go when you get off work, you think you're going home, yeah. something happens. Yeah. God's sovereignty is at work. Yeah. That spirit got it, you have to cooperate with God in spirit to get that thing done. Amen? Alright, I said so. When we make a decision, we have to know the Word of God. We have to be led by the Spirit of God. Because if not, you are, you become the Word that we looked at was paralyzed. Mm -hmm. You just don't know. I just don't know what to do. I don't know. Some of you may not have been there, but I've been there. I just don't What in the world am I going to do here? So you make a decision. Sometimes you pray, but most of the time we don't pray. We go ahead and make the decision. Mm -hmm. true. Yeah. That's true. Because it's, it's, we draw all the bits and pieces together and say this is the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. But it may not be the best way to do it because we didn't pray about it. If we would have prayed about it, we probably wouldn't have did it. And then again, sometimes God allows you to do it because he can work his sorrow at the end to bring you and break you and mold you into the shape of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, God takes all of our wrong, all of our rights, everything we do, and, break, and breaks us and molds us into the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. We can trust God in his faithfulness and his ability to set us back on what? The right course. The God of sovereignty impacts our sense of identity too. Yes. Do you know who you are? Mm -hmm. uh, let me say this. So I know I'm a child of God, but are you sure? Mm -hmm. See, there are cliches out here. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know I'm a child of God. I go to church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. But I, I know well, Wednesday night Bible study, I, I, I'm a child of God. Mm -hmm. But when things come, yeah. you act. Contrary yeah. to all of that. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So really, if you are a child of God, then you begin to what? Trust God. Yeah. Allow God to use you. Allow that old faith from the environment to shape you and to mold you into the person of Jesus Christ. I think there's a chapter in the book of uh, Ezekiel. He told him to go down to the potter's house. Yes. I believe it's Ezekiel. And see what the potter do. And this is what God sovereignty does. I, I can't don't remember what, exactly what that scripture was. But he goes down and he sees the potter. Begin to take a piece of clay. You and I are in these earthen vessels, these clay vessels. Yes, Lord. You see what I'm saying? And it puts it on the potter's wheel. And the potter begins to turn the wheel. And then he 
takes his hands and they, see, God has a hand on his, with us. It, it ain't somebody that's, it's him, him, spirit. It, it, it begins to shape us. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I think they were the same time. Mm -hmm. But it worked all these same lines. God is the one that's shaping you and molding you. And if it don't lack you, lack some things on it, he'll just start all over again. Mm -hmm. He shapes you. He cuts off those parts of the of the part of the, of the, of the clay part that he's in like. He shaped that part just like he wants to shape it. And after he shapes it, he does what? He puts it on display. Same thing about the church. When God finishes the church, he's going to put a masterpiece on display. And each part of the building of the church has been shaped and molded by the Lord Jesus Christ. In his sovereignty. In his sovereign law, he shapes and molds us. Mm -hmm. Especially if you, now if you have to have an understanding that this is what he's doing. If you can't see God's hand in it, you think it's, your, it's something else. But you have to see God's hand in it. You have to see God's hand in it. Everything that happens to you during the day, God's hand is in it. It's for shaping, it's for molding, it's to produce fruit, kindness, mercy, compassion, love, self-control. All of that is him working out, out in, that, in that vessel, the things that make that vessel look good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Can, you see, can you see that? Mm -hmm. Shape it. Mm -hmm. Oh, he has a little anger. Mm. <laughs> well, a little anger right here. Let me shake that off. Yeah. Here's, some, here's some jealousy. Mm. Let, let me get that off. Yeah. Here's some yeah. self righteousness. Yeah. Let me shake yeah. that off. Yeah. Here's some pride. Ooh, that, that, I got to do something with it. Let's shape it up real good. And here's some, some wrath, mm -hmm. some malice, oh. some hatred, mm -hmm. some, oh, some lying, some cheat. Mm -hmm. All that oh, stuff is, yeah. is in the clay, yeah. in the mold. But when God begins to shape and mold you, yeah. then he begins to remove it from you yeah. and you become a brand yeah. new creature. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did y'all ever find that scripture, Jenny? Ezekiel. Yeah. yeah. Is it 115? Uh, it was something. No, by the, by the clay. Jeremiah 1. Jeremiah. 18, I think. Let's look at it very quick and then we'll close. Jeremiah chapter 2. This is Jeremiah? This is Jeremiah. What are you talking about, Jeremiah? In the powder or the clay? The, the powder. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 118. 118? Maybe. Uh, I hear it. I, let's look at it. I'm, I'll let you guys look at it, but I don't want to spend too much time. But Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Powder's in the clay. Shape it. Uh, you gotta give it out. Another thing. When when Paul talks about his wounds, uh, when hatred is taken from you, it leaves a wound because it's taken out. When malice is taken from you, it leaves a wound. Because it's healed by the Spirit of Christ, but at the same time, it was there. I got uh, a whole lot of work need to be done on Willie Harvey. I don't know about somebody else, but I know that God got a lot of work. We can look at it some other time. Well, praise the Lord. Yes, sir. God bless you. Any questions?